Spring is finally here in northern Sweden. Although it is mid-May, the lake is still covered in a thin sheet of ice. There is still some snow and the trees are not yet covered in leaves. But it still feels like spring. We only have four hours of night and our nights are no longer dark. Soon there will be an explosion of wildflowers. The trees will be covered in leaves and there will be new life. I almost don't want to start talking and disrupt all this sound. Spring is here. It's warm, it's 20 degrees. It's honestly so nice to have a spring again. The squirrels are so active. At the moment, sunrise is at four, maybe 3.30 now, and the squirrels arrive and they're pretty much active for 12 hours now. It is warm, it is green, we just need a little bit of rain and then I think we will have an explosion of colour and all the wildflowers will come up but the birds are singing, the squirrels are active but it is so nice to be outside in a t-shirt and not in thermals and big boots, it's lovely. I think naturalists always notice certain events that mark the arrival of spring. For example, a few days ago I saw my first butterfly. Yesterday I noticed the first tree with leaves. The squirrels have also started lactating, so they've given birth and it will just be a few weeks until this forest will have baby squirrels. I was going to start editing my Arctic Puffin video, but I just thought I should be outside enjoying this amazing time of the year. There's only one arrival of spring, and it's amazing to see the transition between darkness, no leaves, and this sudden burst of energy, and obviously it's much nicer to be in a forest than at my desk editing videos, so here we are. <laughs> Spring in northern Sweden is such a stark contrast to winter. It's 5.30 right now and it's just so bright. I have to admit recently I've been struggling a bit with being burnt out, lacking motivation and just generally feeling like I don't have direction and recently I've taken a bit of a step back, reviewed what I'm trying to achieve and it definitely has filled me with direction. I think also, I just feel inspired by spring. We've been swimming, I just feel good. And tonight we're going to photograph black grass. So more photography. <laughs> Thank you.
after our pizza this evening, Juan and I both crushed and fell asleep for two hours, but that's actually probably quite good because tonight we're driving one hour to go to a black grouse hide and it's 10, it's after 10 o'clock now and you can see how bright it is but it will get sort of dark this evening. The black grouse start lecking around one o'clock in the morning so we're aiming to be in the hide for midnight and we will probably have a few hours of black grouse but it's the end of the season and my friend Connie, who is the reason I first came to Sweden, said that we can use his hide and he's finished with customers for the season. So the black grouse have almost finished lecking. There might be a few individuals, but yeah, we'll just have to see what we, what we find. Ah, it's so nice, it's warm, it's bright. So we're all ready, we're packed, we've got hot chocolates and we're just going to pack the car and set off. Uh, I think it'll be all right. Okay, let's test these wellies. We're very alone. Oh, how deep is it? How deep is your love? <laughs> how deep is the water? How deep is your Is it thick? Love? It feels awful. Oh, really? It feels like, and almost like, I don't know when it's going to end. Oh no, How don't tell me that. Okay, I'm going in. Oh, you're right. Oh no. Oh no, no. Are you getting water in? No, 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 no. Okay, so we've arrived in the hide. It was quite the adventure to get here. It is so marshy. There is so much water. We both fell in. We're both wet. And we're supposed to put tents on the mire and wooden planks and we literally couldn't be bothered so we're in this hide which is a bit far from the lecking arena but yeah we aren't prepared to move everything set it up and then take everything back so it might not be optimal for photography I thought I heard a black grouse but um, it's fine I mean it's obviously nicer to film them in snow. I've done that before and we'll just see what we get. Even when we were walking and falling, I could see two males um, lacking. So even though we were making so much noise and splashing around, they were still here and they've flown off now, but I think they'll be back quite soon. But it's still quite dark outside. Okay, I'm gonna set up my camera now. The black grouse arrived at 1am. The birds gather every spring for their annual lek. This is a gathering, it's where males will engage in competitive displays and females visit and basically watch to find the fittest male.
There's two major drivers of a polygynous mating system, and that's male-male competition. So the males have very elaborate feathers and vocalizations, and the females are brown and more conspicuous. And that's because the males don't help with raising the young or the chicks. So it's really important that the female picks the fittest male and gets the best genes. One of my favourite modules at university was mating system strategies. There's so many amazing ways that animals fight for basically genetic lineage and to pass down their genes and it's fascinating. just made a very quick pasta salad but we're about to drive to some river rapids and because all the snow has melted it should be pretty rapid and we're gonna have a walk have a picnic and watch the sunset <laughs> 